You got that? Nice. Jim Beaujolais and Jody Kessler. Can you hear me? Everything's okay? Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately you can hear me. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, it's nice to be back at Spike Fest again after a year. If you recall, I think the name of this Spike particular uh, program this evening is Something Seasonal Part 2. If you recall last year, for some of you, uh, we did Something Seasonal, seasonable, seasonal Part 1, which deal with an exploding car. So this is Something Seasonal Part 2. Uh, which means, well, it wasn't exactly in January. This, this story I'm going to tell you took place actually in December. Actually, in December, a long, long time ago. When I first got out of college, I looked for a long time for a job and finally found a job teaching sixth grade in an elementary school uh, in northern New York. They didn't pay much, and the janitorial services weren't very good, but it, at least it was a job. So. Since there, there was no janitorial services, I spent the end, at, at the end of the day, I would spend some time cleaning up the classroom, erasing the blackboards, tidying up the desk, sweeping the floor, and so forth. I'd spend about, about an hour doing that every day. And then one day, one of my students suddenly appeared and started helping me. I looked at him. Oh, I knew him, and it was Matthew, a slightly less than regular sized boy with large brown eyes, very silently helping me. Uh, I knew Matthew, like I knew all my students. He, he was a particularly sad case. Um, his father died when he was born. Was born. He was raised by a mo his mother until he was eight or nine years old. Then his mother passed away. He was now 11. And he was being raised by his maiden aunt, who was a very a tall, mean woman, who never ceased to tell him how lucky he was that, she was that he was living with her. Because otherwise he'd be in an orphanage or on the street or worse. But Matthew never said anything about that when he was helping me. He didn't say anything at all, hardly, except sometimes he'd talk about his mother and how kind she was and how loving she was and how she made him feel good most of the time. So I thought that was nice. And then one day, Matthew disappeared. He didn't come at the end of the next day. He didn't come the following day, following a week. So finally, I stopped Matthew at the end of the class when they said, Matthew, where were you? I thought you were coming and helping at the end of the, end of the class. He said, well, I, he looked down and said, I'm, I'm, I've been busy or something like that. I said, well, I'm sorry. I mean, that's too bad, Matthew, because you were one of my favorite helpers. And he looked at, up at me with those large brown eyes and said, you did? I said, yes, and I always enjoyed talking with you. You were a really nice fellow to talk with. And Matthew says, I was? <laughs> yes. He says, well, and then he mumbles. And, well, he says, I haven't been coming because I'm, I'm, I'm making you a gift. And uh, I'll see you later. And he disappeared again. Getting towards Christmas time. And uh, so I didn't see Matthew again until the last day of classes before Christmas. And then all the class had a big party, Christmas Christmas party. Kids were there having ice cream and cake and had it carrying on. And they finally left at the end of the day, except one person, and that was Matthew. And he was there. And he shyly, he shyly came up to me, and he said, you know, he says, I, I have your Christmas gift, Mr. B. I said, oh, yeah, great. Really? Well, what, what is it, Matthew? And he gave me this box. I said, well, that's really beautiful, Matthew. What is it? Can I, can you hear me now? Yeah. Can I, can I see it? Can I see what's inside? Can I, can, I look in, can I look inside, Matthew? Is there something I can look at? He says, no, you, you can't see what's inside. You can't feel it. You can't taste it or touch it. But it makes you feel good all over, warm on cold nights, and safe when you're all alone. I said, well, Matthew, what is it that could possibly make me feel good all, all over, warm on cold nights, and safe when I'm all alone? He said, uh, it's love, Mr. B. And Mom always says, it's best when you give it away. Aww. Then he hugged me and left off and it disappeared. So, I keep this box on my nightstand, living room, uh, and when friends come by, 
They want, they want to know, why am I keeping this crude box in the, in the house? It's not very creative or constructive. I said, no, it's, I keep it because there's love in it. You know, they look at me very quizzically. And I says, yeah. And uh, I keep it because it makes me feel good when I look at it. It also makes me feel, know that something, that love is only good when you give it away.